Watching an astronaut walk to the rocket for launch is an occasion that's often incredibly exciting and inspiring, and sometimes twinged with nerves as well, because we know that an enormous explosion is about to be set off right underneath them. However, often when I see this, I have one important question coming to mind. What's in this box they all seem to be carrying? Let's find out together. Have you ever wondered the same thing? Why do astronauts carry these odd looking briefcases that seem to be plumbed into their suits? Like they can't be providing oxygen to breathe because they're still on earth and they almost always have their helmets off too. So it can't be that. It's also not gonna be for carrying their toothbrush or spare clothes either. Since why would that be attached to them with this tubing? It's not entirely just an old thing either. Sure, the Apollo astronauts did carry them on their way to their moonbound Saturn Vs but recent launches have them too. For example, here's local hero Tim Peake getting ready to launch to the International Space Station in 2015, and he has a mystery box too. It does seem like the most recent SpaceX astronauts aren't carrying them, so that gives us our first clue. The newer, lighter weight flight suits here don't need whatever it is that the bigger suits worn by Apollo, Soyuz, and more seem to require. It turns out that what these boxes are for is cooling. The big suits here are incredibly hot. This is often compounded by the fact that launches take place in Florida or in Kazakhstan when we were working with the Russians. Either way, pretty hot places. The last thing you want right before you launch to space is heat stroke or severe dehydration. So these little boxes cool and supply water that's pumped around the suit to keep the astronauts a healthy temperature. You can see here an Apollo suit with all of its tubes for cooling the astronaut. And a more recent ISS suit looks pretty similar here. Space may be cold, but inside these massive suits is very, very warm. The boxes aren't taken on board the rocket either. They're purely for cooling on the ground. Once on board the rocket, they plug into the command module itself to get cooling. And when in space, be that a spacewalk or actually being on the lunar surface, the water is cooled and supplied by these huge backpacks they're wearing. They provide air too. It's a pretty essential backpack. The astronauts also don't have a box when they land back on Earth. They need to wait to be collected to get some help keeping cool. The reason that the SpaceX astronauts don't need these portable air conditioners is that those suits are much lighter. They aren't really spacesuits as such and can't be worn on spacewalks or anything similar, but rather they're flight suits or pressure suits, only to be worn inside the launcher. Once you're outside the vehicle, you'd need a bigger suit for more protection against things like micrometeoroids and you need articulated joints so the pressurized suit doesn't end up filling up like a big balloon. That means these lighter weight and more dexterous SpaceX flight suits aren't enough for that either. When in the seats of the rocket though, the SpaceX astronauts still plug into the chair to receive power, gas to pressurize the suit, and air instead of water to cool the suit. The reason that these suits and the bigger ones are pressurized is to keep the astronauts awake. If pressure were to drop, like when you're in space, then blood can pool in the lower body and you can pass out. So having a suit that can maintain a high enough pressure on the body automatically is very handy. Oh, also to be clear, the suits worn for launch in Apollo and Soyuz also aren't quite enough for going outside the vehicle in space, but they do contain a parachute pack in case that happens accidentally at any point. Actually, I don't think the cooling boxes are the only interesting part of the astronaut kit. I mean, all of it's cool, they're going to space, but one thing that isn't talked about very much is their personal preference kit. This is a little baggie that they take on board with all of their personal items. Astronauts can choose to take pretty much whatever they want, although the items do need to be approved by management. Always the way. They also don't need to declare what they take with them to the public. That's at their discretion. So we don't know what most of them take. Currently, when flying to the ISS, astronauts can take up to 1.5 kilograms of personal items. And the most common things are cameras, flags, patches, and musical instruments. But I would love to know what you would take as your personal items if you were flying to space. Let me know in the comments. For me, I guess I would take some photos of my family, a camera, and maybe some sentimental items from my PhD or something. And also some Pokemon cards, so that I had the first ones that ever went to space and was the coolest kid on the playground. That's the dream, right? If anyone knows any astronauts who want to help me out there, do let me know in the comments too. I also think that the Apollo 11 mission, the first one to the moon, had some of the most interesting and some of the most boring items taken in these personal kits. Neil Armstrong got special permission to take wood from the propeller of the Wright Flyer, the first plane to ever achieve powered flight. That, I think, is pretty cool. On the other hand, Michael Collins took a razor and some shaving cream. 
Not as exciting, but if that's what he wanted to help him feel human and not so homesick, who am I to judge? Apollo 14 astronaut Stuart Rooser took about 500 seeds in his kit, and these have since been planted and grown into moon trees. Those are just a few of the most interesting ones we know about, and you can read more about all of them online. But I bet there's some cool stuff that's gone up in other personal kits that we just don't know about yet. Anyway, I hope this solved a fun little mystery for you too, and you enjoyed learning that astronauts are actually carrying portable air conditioners to the launch pad. Subscribe if you're new, and don't forget to let me know what you'd want to take to space. Until next time, stay safe team. I'll see you soon. Bye!